Hey, what's up everybody, Rich Gaming Guy here. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you guys around the device that I use for all of my screen captures here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. At the time of this recording, I have over 600 videos posted here on YouTube, the majority of which I've done some sort of screen capture in the videos, whether it's a tutorial or a gameplay demo or just a tour of a setup. I use this for literally every screen capture I've ever done, and that is the Avermedia 2 Plus Live Game Portable. This is an amazing product. It has 4K pass-through. It records everything directly to the micro SD card, which gets inserted into the slot on the back side of this. Now, while it has 4K pass-through, it does not record in 4K. So you can record up to 1080p, but for me, I'm using this on retro game consoles, or at the very least, I'm using it on retro games, even if it's through a more modern setup. So I don't need to have 4K recording capabilities for any of those games. Um, now, I've used this on a ton of different devices, uh, PCs, consoles, and the only thing that I've come across so far that it doesn't work on is the PS5. But we really don't even need a capture card on a PS5 because you have the ability to screen capture directly on the PS5 itself. So I'm gonna jump into the setup process here so you know exactly what it takes to set this up. It's really simple, but I'll show you guys how I set this up every time I use it on my gaming PC. So I'll be using this with an HP Pavilion gaming PC, running Botticera, but I'll also show you guys how I actually use this on older retro consoles. So I have a Super Nintendo sitting here. I'll show you guys how I set it up for retro game consoles as well, because if we think to those retro game consoles, we didn't have HDMI. It was pre-HDMI, so we used AV cables. So you can even use AV cables with this. You just have to have a AV to HDMI converter in order to get the signal over to HDMI, which is what gets plugged into the back of this. So I'm gonna walk you guys through that process. Let's jump into it. All right, so here we have my HP Pavilion Gaming PC along with the Avermedia 2 Plus Live Game Portable. So first thing we need to do here is we need to make sure that we plug in the power supply cable that plugs in directly in over here next to the two HDMI ports. And the other end of this is going to be USB. So we need to either plug this into an outlet via, via USB, or we could plug it into any USB port on our PC. So I have this PC that has an abundance of USB ports. I have four in the front and I think five or six in the back. So I'm gonna actually just plug this into the back just so it's a little bit out of the way and I'm not risking you know, bumping into it in the front. So I have a bunch of USBs. I'm just gonna pick one random one, plug it in there, and that is good to go. Next thing we need to do is we need to make our HDMI connections. So since I'm using a modern day PC, this has HB HDMI output. So I just have to find the HDMI cable, which I have right here. This plugs directly into the HDMI port on the back side of the PC. So I'm gonna flip this around here and that's gonna go into my input. So you can see here under HDMI, I have in and out. So that's gonna be going in. So the easiest way to remember, because obviously both of these are going to be HDMI connections, in is going to be from your device into this. And then from here, you're gonna go into your uh, TV or monitor. So thinking you want your feed to be going into this. So in is going to be the source. So PC is the source, connects right there into the in. And then here is my HDMI cable for my TV. So that is going to be out. So that goes into this last one here and we are ready to go. So next thing we need to do is we need to take a micro SD card and slide that into the micro SD card slot located right here. So I'm gonna grab this 32 gigabyte Samsung micro SD card and it's gonna slide directly into that slot. Just push it in and it clicks right into place. That's all we need to do here. So I'm gonna put that like that. We bring the PC a little bit closer here, running out of cable. So I'll leave it just like that. And all we need to do at this point is we need to power on our PC. So I'm just going to hit the power button here. You'll see that it starts to light up. We're going to get some colors flickering on here. And once it actually boots up, it should turn uh, blue up here. So now that Botticera is fully booted up here on the HP Pavilion Gaming PC, in order to start recording my screen, all I have to do is hit this blue button. It should start flashing a slow flash of red. So you can see how it does flicker there, but it's a slow flicker. If this starts flickering repetitively at you, then you may have a full SD card. 
So in this case, we are fully recording. So I'll actually pull the feed up onto the screen right now so you can see exactly what we're doing on there. And I'll actually take my, I don't have a uh, controller plugged into my PC currently. So let me plug in this uh, PlayStation style controller here. And I'll just skip through these different collections on my Botticera build. So you can see that I am able to control this now and we are fully recording the screen. So that is literally all you need to do. And now the other really cool thing about this is we have some additional connections that we can make here. So right here, this is a microphone connection. So if I wanted to take a uh, headphone set with a microphone on it, I can plug that in directly there, put that on and be able to record my audio right into that. And I have done that in the past quite a bit. Uh, the majority of my videos now though, I also have my camera going like I do here. So I have a microphone built into that. So I don't have to use that quite as much these days, but the quality on here is great too. We also have different modes over here. And then this right here is volume. So we can adjust the audio up or down to change the volume levels. And here, this there's a couple of different ways to um, you know, set this up. This is just the way that I do it and it's on the middle setting currently. So that just means that we're recording from this onto a uh, monitor and I do have my TV monitor located literally i'll move this over so you can see right there so you can see that this screen matches up with exactly what you're seeing on the actual capture feed so we're going to come back over here and i'm going to show you guys exactly how i use this now with a retro game console all right so here i have my super nintendo console and i'm just going to show you how i would actually connect this over so we'll flip this over and back here you can see we have an old style connection. So this is our AV out. So here's our AV cables. We just simply plug that in like so. And we have these connections here which are red, white, and yellow. So we obviously can't fit. Let me grab my Avermedia here. And let's see. So we obviously cannot fit these into the backside here because we can only have a full regular HDMI connection. So I'm gonna leave that right there and I'm gonna grab my AV to HDMI converter. So looks just like this. One side has our AV connections, the other side has an HDMI connection. And this is all powered by yet another USB. So this can get plugged in same as the Aver Media 2, either directly into your PC if you're using a PC, in this case we're not, but we can plug this into a power outlet or um, you know, a computer would even work. Anything USB that has power source, we could plug that into. So I have an outlet right up here that enables me to get power to this. So all we have to do here is we need to connect our AV connection from our Super Nintendo in this case. So just match up those colors with the input. So now for the output here, we need HDMI. So I have an HDMI cable. The other end of this is going to go directly into my input here. And then I'm going to put another cable, another HDMI cable from my output on this directly to my TV. So it's a lot of connections obviously to convert an old retro console like this, but the feed and the performance of this when screen recording, even on these older retro consoles is absolutely phenomenal. So it gets you through on the modern day PCs and consoles as well as on the old retro consoles. And I even use this, not this, but the Aver Media on my Xbox One all the time when I'm doing screen recordings over there as well. So you can use this just on a bunch of different devices, bunch of different setups. So definitely highly recommend it. All right, so you can see from the video here, really simple setup process here. It takes me a matter of just a couple seconds to get this set up and ready to go every time I need to do any sort of screen recording. So if you guys have any further questions, feel free to hit me up in the comment section below. If you want additional information on the Aver Media 2, drop down to the description of this video. I'll put a direct link in there to take you over to Amazon if you're looking to get additional information on the specs for this or just to pick up a copy of it. So. That's gonna do it for today though. You guys know the drill. Smash that like button if you enjoyed the video and you found this information helpful to you. And of course, hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop for all things Retro Gaming Guy here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.